in the contemporary art world there are few painters who are prominent not only in the art scenario of india but also in the world among whom are jagdish swaminathan krishn khanna and gulam rasool santosh jagdish swaminathan was born in sanjoli shimla himachal pradesh in 1928 his father n v jagdish ayer served as pa to the minister in commerce department the family mostly lived in two cities shimla and delhi swami the fourth child among the eight brothers and sisters did his schooling from hartcourt butler school when he was young boy he had an inclination to draw and paint he painted landscapes the sunlight shifting inch by inch over the hills and trees of shimla was very exciting for him and he captured those moments assiduously but his initial desire to go to an art school could not be materialized and after matriculation he joined the delhi university as a pre medical student in 1943 he failed his pre medical exam left home and ran away to calcutta here he began to do tidbits of business to support himself he sold cinema tickets in black market and squatted on payment selling underwear after one and a half years in calcutta he joined the congress socialist party in delhi as a whole timer in the party office soon he became the executive of the delhi wing and edited their trade union journal mazdoor awaz he worked sincerely in the party till 1951 in 1951 the party leadership was handed over to the centrist ajay ghosh in 53 swami nathan took away himself from the party and decided to get married but the allowance of rupees 30 was insufficient to run a family in 1955 he got married to bhavani pensi a girl not of his community after that they were virtually homeless and penniless but family reconciliations followed slowly and then for 10 years or so swami lived with his wife and two sons as a joint family with his parents in karol bag he did various ad hoc jobs and earned little bits of money he designed book jackets and freelanced as an author writing children stories for dainik hindustan and sarita his association as an activist with the communist party continued for some time at an unofficial level and got translation jobs with people's publishing house till 1962 he worked with them throughout these years swami had been painting off and on painting was the first vocation he had chosen for himself as an adolescent besides that he kept in touch with what was happening in art by looking reading and mostly by hop hobbing with artists and writers in delhi he had never been trained at an art school rather briefly studied art at delhi polytechnic in the year 1956 in 1958 he got a scholarship to study graphics at the academy of fine arts at warsaw the scholarship was for 3 years but he returned home after 6 months due to family circumstances he worked as an unofficial apprenticeship to an artist like seloj mukherjee in 1963 swami nathan with a nucleus of like minded colleagues launched the group 1980 they presented an exhibition that was inaugurated which emphasized the role of intuition spontaneity and improvisation 
ingredients of surrealism more in line with Klee's approach than say Dali and ones which were relevant to the exploration of the roots of the group members. The group 1980 named after the number of the house in an obscure town on the west coast of India where its members held the founding conference. He also served on the board for the Indian Council for Cultural Relations and was a trustee of the Indira Gandhi National Center for the Arts. In 1981, he was invited by the Madhya Pradesh government to set up the Rupankar Museum at Bharat Bhavan, Bhopal and served as director to the museum till 1990. He had also been a visiting professor in Jamia Millia University, New Delhi. Exhibitions Swaminathan held almost 30 solo exhibitions in his lifetime. He also participated in many national and international exhibitions. In 1963, inaugural exhibition Group 1980, New Delhi. 1965, Tokyo Binale, Japan. UNESCO International Exhibition of Indian Graphics, Poland. 1968, First International Trinale, Lalit Kala Academy. 1986, First National Bharat Bhavan Binale, Bhopal. 1987, Festival of India, Moscow, USSR. 1988 Festival of India Japan, Second National Binale Bharat Bhavan Bhopal, 1991 Nine Indian Contemporaries, 1995 Indian Contemporary Painting Christie's Auction London, 16 October 1995, 1996 Modern Indian Contemporary Paintings, 100 Years. Sotheby's Auction, London. They presented an exhibition that was inaugurated by Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. The artist group included Jairam Patel, Rajesh Mehra, Gautam Sheikh, Raghav Kaneria, Himmat Shah, Jyoti Bhatt, Amba Das, Ri Dappa Naidu, Bal Krishan Patel, S.G. Nikam, and Eric Brown. In 1966, he published the Polymical Monthly Contra in collaboration with the poet Octavio. He did several one-man shows in India. He has been shown abroad in group shows and has represented India in various international binales. In 1968, he won an honor mention in the first trinale. The next year, he was invited to Brazil to be a part of the international jury at Sao Bialo Binale. In 1968, he was awarded the Jawaharlal Nehru Fellowship, which induced him to travel in the country and to write his thesis, The Relevance of the Traditional New Man in Contemporary Art. The fellowship freed him from financial worries for a couple of years, and afterwards, he found galleries only too eager to promote him. He also served on the board of Indian Council for Cultural Relations and was a trustee of the Indira Gandhi National Center for the Arts. In 1981, he was invited by the Madhya Pradesh government to set up the Rupankar Museum at Bharat Bhavan, Bhopal and served as director to the museum till 1990. He had also been a visiting professor in Jamia Millia University, New Delhi. At the end of 1970, Swaminathan pitched in with group of artists protesting the functions and structure of the National Academy of Art, which brought him more fame and publicity. Swaminathan's paintings can be divided broadly into four phases. In the first brief phase, around 1959, he attempted an imagery akin to that of prehistoric art and to the totemic sign language of the primitive. In the second phase, he shifted his attention to Indian folk 
and tribal culture, especially to such images and symbols that have magical implications. From 1960, he made repeated use of symbols derived from Indian mythology like signs of Om, Swastik, the Lotus, the Lingam, the Snake and the Palm imprint. He used canvas and oil and sometimes watercolour. He dipped his hand in paint and slapped it against the canvas using a rapid calligraphic movement of the hand to scratch and inscribe the image, allowing dots and dribbles to activate the informally painted surfaces as in Shrine 2 dated to 1965. A snake could thus be inscribed into a wall of thick paint. The third face was neither interior nor exterior, but the transcendent screen of the imagination upon which geometric forms took shape in a faint sublimial manner. He called these pictures color geometry of space. In the last step in 1967, the temple miniaturized and placed within a sun-like shape. In 1968, Swaminathan moved into a fourth phase. In the paintings, he selected images from nature but dematerializes them by making them metaphorical. These are, in a sense, landscape pictures. These are zigzag mountains, delicate, transparent and lofty symbols of ascent and of eternity. There is usually a piece of the mountains, a free floating rock hung against the sky with a perfect poise defying the gravity of the earth Sometimes this aerial rock is the perch of a bird or its floating vehicle. There is always an exquisite bird or a pair and sets of birds, swallows, cuckoos, parrots, quails and peacocks. There is usually a tree or a flowering bush at the foot of the mountain or the crest of a hill. A virginal plant is the first flush of spring, a fragile tulsi, a cherry blossom or gul mohar. A tree sprung from the air as it were all fragrance and color. Its roots barely anchored to the soil, its branches filgreed against the sky. In the painting Ardh Chandra, dated to 1973, the space of the picture radiates light Sometimes the radiance is concentrated in a pale sun. Otherwise, there are crescents of pure light cutting across the face of the mountain, bright shadows of hidden moon and sun. There are moreover entire phases of unsuccessful work. During 1971-73, for instance, he began to multiply the birds in a landscape, perching them on rocks, clouds and mountain peaks. The important paintings are The Other Journey, 1976, in oil, Ardh Chandra, 1973, in oil, Sanstuti, 1974, in oil, Dig Diganta, 1974, in oil, the Lotus and the Sun, 1969, in oil. The Last Step, 1967, in oil. Shrine, 2, 1965, oil, wax and sand. And Dik Nritte, 1974, oil. On 25th April, 1994, he died in New Delhi. Some of Swaminathan's paintings are to be studied. Plate 1 depicts perception series painted in oil dated to 1972 and now in the collection of Jangir Nicholson Museum. In 1968, Swaminathan moved into the fourth phase. In these paintings, 
he selects images from nature but dematerializes them by making them metaphorical he expresses a spiritual sentiment about the unrealized universe but through the mediating mirror of nature plate 2 is mountain bird and tree series which was done in 1976 and in oil medium today it is in the collection of ngma this was a kangra and rajput miniature inspired series plate 3 is color and geometry series painted in oil in 1968 and at present and in the private collection at mumbai this shows the cool blue tones with multifaceted textures plate 4 is the text detext series painted in oil and wax dated to 1993 and in private collection at london his other works are kala tect 1978 oil on canvas plate 5 plate 6 is untitled dated to 1974 oil on canvas krishn khanna an indian artist born in 1925 in faisalabad pakistan in 1938 khanna traveled from mumbai to britain or rms strathmore after attending the imperial service college windsor england from where he graduated he stayed there from 1938 to 1942 then khanna got enrolled at government college lahore from 1942 to 1944 in 1946 he started working with grindley's bank for 14 years in 1961 he resigned from the bank and devoted his full time to art he is basically a self taught artist most of khanna's work is figurative he chose not to explore the abstraction that most of his contemporaries were delving into he tried to emphasize the human beings caught up in their particular condition khanna's work captures moments in history much like photographs do untitled paintings of krishna khanna are digital prints on canvas color pencil on paper oil on canvas acrylic and charcoal on canvas dry pastel on paper from the retrospective exhibition the painting death autumn and fields from tara are done in oil on canvas but the artist technique is far from photo realist he transfers his observations on to the canvas with spontaneity and exuberance keeping the representational elements of his subject matter intact the artist use of color and his expressionist brushwork make the mundane rise to the challenge of the creative a far afternoon a painted saga by krishna khanna a feature documentary directed by shruti hari hara subramanian and produced by piramal art foundation the documentary is a film makers attempt to memorialize the artist process involved in the creation of the eponymous artwork done by veteran artist krishan khanna and trace some of the influences for the artist a film produced in five parts A far afternoon delves into those influences that eventually rendered themselves on canvas. Mumbai, the city in which Krishna Khanna was inducted into the Progressive Artist Group, the Bharat wedding procession, a constant in Indian weddings, the choice of colors, yellow, blue, and whites, other artists, other artworks that have brought him to this place. and point in time the music directors a far afternoon the music duo arvind jay shankar are based out of chennai india this documentary won the following awards in the 63rd national film awards 
it got the best art cultural film in the 63rd national film awards it got the best music award in non feature film category in may 2016 it was nominated as the best documentary in new york indian film festival in april 2016 official selection was made in the third cinema indian stockholm in november 2015 it was officially selected in all lights india international film festival awards fellowship and honors in 1962 khanna received the rock failure fellowship new york in 1965 he was awarded national award by lalit kala academy new delhi in its annual exhibition in 1965 he was given the travel fellowship by the council of economic and cultural affairs new york in 1968 was awarded the gold medal in the first trinale of contemporary world art new delhi in 1986 got the president award in the international festival of art baghdad iraq In 1989 got a gold medal in the first Biennale of Art Lahore Pakistan in 1990 got the Padma Shri by the government of India in 2011 got the Padma Bhushan by the government of India in 2004 Lalit Kala Ratna from the president of India in 1997 Kala Ratna from All India Fine Arts and Craft Society New Delhi in 1989 only he received the Sahitya Kala Academy Parishad award in New Delhi in 1964 artist in residence American Washington DC in 1955 commendation by Mumbai Art Society Mumbai in 1955 only he received the shorashtra government award for oil painting exhibitions there is no dearth of number of exhibitions in which krishna khanna participated joint exhibition in 1985 khanna with ram kumar had joint exhibitions in gallery 7 mumbai in 1954 he with mf hussain held the shows of paintings in all india fine arts and craft society new delhi his participation in exhibitions abroad in 2015 he participated in abbe gray and indian modernism selections from the nxu art collections gray art gallery new york university new york in 2011 participated in ethos v indian art through lens of history 1900 to 1980 indigo blue art singapore in 2011 roots in the air branches below modern and contemporary art from india st jose museum of art st jose in 1991 the fifth binale havana cuba in 1998 first international binale lahore pakistan in 1988 festival of india japan in 1987 festival of india ussr cops de cover geneva in 1986 baghdad international festival of india in 1970 expo 70 indian pavilion osaka japan in 1962 indian participation in venice binale in 1961 tokyo binale in 1960 sao paulo binale selected solo exhibitions abroad in the year 2015 khanna held the solo show of his paintings when the band begins to play gross venner gallery london in 2005 saffron art and pundole art gallery new york in 1965 at the egan gallery new york in 1964 Watkins Art Gallery American University Washington DC in 1962 and 1960 at Leicester Galleries London selected group exhibitions award 
in the year 2009 group exhibition of bharat ratna jewels of modern indian art museum of fine art boston and kalpana figurative art in india presented by the indian council for cultural relations iccr at ericon gallery london in 2003 transition at ub5 in london in 2001 at saffron art and pundole art gallery new york in 1997 trist with destiny art from modern india 1947 1997 singapore art museum organized by the center for international modern art kolkata in 1996 modern and contemporary indian paintings south base auction london in 1995 indian contemporary painting krishchi auction london in 1982 Contemporary Indian Art Burlington House London in 1982 Myth and Reality Museum of Modern Art Oxford UK in 1979 Modern Asian Art Fukuoka Art Museum Japan in 1972 One Word Through Art Ben and Abe Gray Foundation St Paul MN USA in 1971 Smithsonian Institute Washington DC In 1968, Contemporary Art Dialogue Between East and West Museums of Modern Art, Tokyo, Japan. In 1968, New Art Center, London. In 1966, Lincoln Center, New York. In 1965, 10 Contemporary Artists of India, University of South Florida, Tampa. Jackson Art Museum, Jacksonville, Delgado Art Museum, New Orleans. Hunter Gallery, Chattanooga, Colorado, Fine Art Center, Colorado Spring, Long Beach, Art Institute, San Francisco, East Wing Center, Honolulu. In 1965, 10 contemporary painters from India, MIT, Cambridge, New Jersey State Museum, Trenton. In 1963, contemporary painters from India, Lever House, New York. In 1959, artists of fame and of promise, Leicester Galleries, London. In 1959, trends in contemporary paintings from India, Gaharam Gallery, New York. In 1959, modern Indian art, Cario, contemporary art from India, Essen, Dortmund, Zurich. Writer, Krishna Khanna has published various articles for Lalit Kala Contemporary Series and has written. on Rabindranath Tagore and also on the surrealist movement he lives in America he was also lecturer in the art at the Jawaharlal Nehru University New Delhi example of some famous works of Krishna Khanna are game one series in plate 1 is painted in oil dated to 1971 and at present in private collection at London in the above said painting The faces of the leaders are blank and anonymous a bit like jury discussing poverty while the karsas of a poor man lies outstretched below the table Krishna Khanna's canvases are a statement of the human predicament it matters little whether they relate directly to the indian scene in the final analysis they are a biting comment on the visible increase of violence in the world and of its grim tolerance and acceptance of death another painting in plate 2 is lovers painted in oil dated to 1973 and in the collection of jahangir nikolson museum ncpa here the drawing is firm and sure the colors unfold brilliantly placed as segments to set off the figure color is used to enhance the prevailing mood of mystery deep browns reds and blues lent weight to the strikingly sober structure four bandwalas in procession in plate 3 it is painted with oil dated to 1989 and in the collection of ngma In this Krishan has been able to evolve his artistic confidence in its ability
to fuse sadness and joy, color and sobriety, material flexibility and emotional fidelity. In 1973, his work in Plate 4 is Oil on Canvas was titled Untitled. Truck series in Plate 5 is painted in oil dated to 1978 and now in a private collection. This was the first series painted in 1974. Here the subject as usual is sad, tragic and even morbid. Zazama Canon series of Plate 6 is in oil dated to 1993 and in a private collection at Mumbai. In 1980, he did some works in acrylic. One such work is titled, Reach Hither Thy Hand and Thrust It Into My Sight. Now I would discuss about the life and works of Gulam Rasul Santosh. Widely known in the world of modern Indian art as Santosh, Santosh was born in 1929 in Srinagar, Kashmir. He belonged to a Kashmiri Muslim family of modest means in the Chinkral Mohalla, Labba Kadal neighborhood of old Srinagar. He completed his matriculation in 1945 with painting as a subject, but was forced to give up the thought of further studies because of his father's death. He had to take up several odd jobs like signboard painting, weaving silk and whitewashing walls to support himself. Slowly he began concentrating on commercial art and became a skillful paper mache artist. In 1950, Santosh joined the Progressive Arts Association in Kashmir, formed as a result of painter S.H. Raza's effort to mobilize Kashmiri painters. He showed across India as a member of this association. In 1954, he won the government scholarship to study fine arts under celebrated and famous painter, late N.S. Bendre at the MS University, Baroda. From 1954 to 1956, Santosh was a student of painting, weaving and paper mache. In his early years, he was greatly influenced by geometric shapes and the mysticism of Kashmir Valley. He began by painting landscapes of the snow-clad houses and the backwaters on the banks of River Jhelum. Later influenced by Cubism, he started painting Cubist landscapes, a theme for which he is very popular now, says Shabir, his son, who is also a painter. A lot of his works of 1952-55 are drawn from ordinary motifs, mother and child, woman at the tap, woman with lamp, or before a mirror, fisher folk on Bombay seaside, all pulled in this direction from a volatile sketch to a stable hieroglyphic. He then started his career with landscape painting in all different mediums of watercolor, oil, and acrylic. In the early 1960s, Santosh studied Tantric, mystical art, and Kashmir Shaivism. During this period, he switched over to figure painting and came in close contact with a group of abstract painters like Birende, P.T. Reddy, Om Prakash, and others who took to abstract painting. And from 1970, when they came in contact with Western painters, like Kandinsky, Mondrian, Paul Klee, and learnt that they derived inspiration and spiritual nourishment from Indian metaphysical and spiritual doctrine. G.R. Santosh and his group of abstract painters moved for divine inspiration from their own cultural heritage. They were inspired by tantric yantras like the Shri Yantra, the source of power creating the cosmos. They transformed tantric yantras of the cosmogomy and cosmic processes of creation appeared in three-dimensional volumes on two-dimensional surface. They also found inspiration from folk miniatures, manuscripts, illustrations, especially astrological manuscripts. His red and white series 1968 
was inspired from tantric diagrams, rituals, and insights. Santosh also came in close contact with Buddhist monks, Sufi saints, and Hindu yogis and learnt about tantric ideas, forms, their symbols, and the philosophy behind them. The art of G.R. Santosh lies in the spirit of this indigenous attitude and explores the spiritual basis of man's being. His artistic expression is seen in triangles, cubes, squares, and hexagonal and other tantric symbols are used to explain the origin of the cosmos and Shakti, that is, power of the female as the cause of the origin. Santosh presents a coherent world in the vital images of geometrical forms. He elaborates the concept of triangle into a hexagon representing sunaya or space. In these geometrical figures, he has shown aesthetically the five elements of earth, water, fire, air and space originating in life. His untitled series painted in 1989 are famous paintings illustrating the tantric concept of Shiva and Shakti in the creation of the universe. Thus, he is inventive in form and a super colorist. Though his paintings are two-dimensional, but he creates a strange illusion of three-dimensional effect. Painting to use is like poetry, timeless and universal. He once said in an interview in Kashmir, art was taught in school after class 5th, but I remember drawing in class 2, starting at the onset on a landscape which I liked so much that I concentrated on landscapes doing several of these. Poet and novelist Santosh was an acclaimed mystic poet in Kashmiri and also wrote profusely in Urdu. His Urdu novel Samandar Pyasa Hai drew praise from the literati. In 1979, he was awarded by the Sahit Academy for his collection of poems in Kashmiri titled Beshuk Ro Exhibitions. Santosh held his first solo show in 1953 in Srinagar and since then he held over 30 one-man shows in India, USA, Canada, Japan, Hong Kong and Singapore. His paintings have been exhibited in international shows, notably at the Sao Pialo Binale in 1969 and 72, first and fourth Trinale India in 1968 and 1978, in 1984 Contemporary Indian Art, National Gallery of Modern Art, New Delhi, and in 1986 the Neo Tantra Art, UCLA, Los Angeles. Awards and Honor in 1973, Santosh received the National Award by the Lalit Kala Academy, New Delhi. In 1977, he was given the Padma Shri by the Government of India. In 1984, he won the Artists of the Year Award in New Delhi. White, red, number one, titled in plate one, is the same human forms in bright colors. Untitled, painted in 1971, and now in a private collection, Mumbai. In an interview, G.R. Santosh said, My concept is broadly thus. Sex is elevated to the level of transcendental experience. I take the human form in its dual male and female aspects, in sexual union. This I capture and regard it as a yogic discipline. Untitled, painting created in 1971, and now in a private collection at New Delhi. Here, Santosh is firm on his universal concept. My paintings are based on the male and female concept of Shiva and Shakti, and therefore constructed as Tantra. To me, painting is necessary, normal activity, no more special than any of my other activities. Untitled, dated, to 1982, painted in oil and in the collection of Lalit Kala Academy, New Delhi. His deepening metaphysical emphasis had by now 
appropriated various structural and symbolic techniques from neo tantric art forms titled untitled dated to 1985 painted in oil and at present in ngma collection in this painting too santosh has shown the tantric meditation he says the relationship between sound and image mantra and yantra pure sound and pure geometry this is tantra santosh died on march 10 1997 in new delhi he is survived by his wife santosh who was a kashmiri pandit and has a son and a daughter